Here we have Austerlitz. Now the problem with the historical Austerlitz for game designers is that the armies were essentially equal, more or less. And the Allies had the excellent defensive terrain. They weren't going to attack the French army. The French army wasn't going to, couldn't attack them. The battle would not happen. Napoleon convinced the coalition that all he had was the this, and that it'd be an easy win for them. Now in a war game, you know the history. You know what's going on. You're not going to fall for that bluff. How do you replicate that in the game? The way it's replicated in pub battles is, if Napoleon is simply bluffing and has a much larger army, then he must win. If he doesn't have this large army and he just has these few troops, then the coalition must win. There's no stalemate option. If the coalition is going to win, they need to be attacking right out of the blocks. However, as soon as they realize that the French have brought everyone on, they need to be able to switch to the defensive and try to hold. The way Pub Battles handles this is that until the first Coalition HQ spots one of the optional HQs, they don't know. Once they spot the HQ, you roll a die. On a four better, the French brought everybody and the French must win. Less than four, this is all they have, the Coalition must win. The Coalition has four HQs, as I've set up today, that have no troops around them. All the troops are in on the reserve cards. So some of these Coalition HQs are just decoys. In this scenario, the same holds true for the French. You see four HQs that come on turn one. This game, I happen to have all the, those forces on one HQ. The other HQs are just decoys. And I won't know if they're actually there or not until the Napoleon HQ block is spotted by a Coalition HQ block and I roll the die. All right, we good with that? Let's get started. There's heavy fog for the first three turns of this eight turn game, basically all morning. Visibility is just one third of a foot move. It's now mid morning. The two opposing forces are moving slowly in the fog. And here we have the situation on turn three, it's late morning. This is north, this is south. On the south side we see some HQs have exposed each other. Because of the tight placement of units from reserve cards to the board, you see that this could be very vulnerable. If this unit gets forced to retreat, all these units become spent and retreat as well. Ordinarily, you do not come into this close contact still on reserve cards. But at Austerlitz, remaining hidden is critical. And in this case, both commands will have a chance to deploy in wider form. Austria's 5th Corps Cavalry charges. In the confusion of the battle, half of each corps is placed in disarray. Turn 3, combat. Here in the south, the coalition begins their drive. We start with Bagration's advance guard. Davu and Lene are giving ground in front of the furious coalition assault. Doktorov is deploying bags and has reorganized the confusion from last turn's assault. It's midday. The fog lifts and we still don't know if the French army is in full strength or if it's as weak as Napoleon said it was. Hohenlohe's cuirassiers charge again, inflicting heavy casualties on Lene's troops and Sue begins swinging his mighty 4th Corps to face this onslaught. It's midday, and still no one knows if the full French force is here or not. The coalition continues to press on the French right. The French continue to fall back, but they haven't fallen apart yet. And now it's mid-afternoon. The French Imperial Guard artillery opens up on Sue's line. To no effect. Napoleon comes within vision Visual sight of Kolarath. We must roll to see if Napoleon is here today. Any red circles means yes. Indeed he is, with an enthusiastic six. He has everyone else with him. All the other HQs that were back here are just decoys. Now they're up here. And Kolarath. Boom. Napoleon has brought everyone. So the French must win. If the Austrians can eke out a draw, a stalemate, it's an Austrian win. The question is, do they have enough to hold? 
They have already deployed bags here, so they can't fall back beyond this point. This early deployment of their bags could be their undoing. Sue deploys his bags. He's going to hold here, recover his, his artillery, and make them pay. The cuirassiers charge again. Dr. Rod's artillery opens up on Sue's men. With good effect. Here, Davout's men are outflanked, and they have no retreat. Well, you certainly can't say they went down without a fight. They held out heroically, but in the end, they succumbed to the overwhelming numbers. And now it's just before dinner. The French have less than half a day to win a battle. The Russian guard charges the French line. The line is almost breached, but the attack is stopped. It's after dinner in the early evening. The French are still racing to come to grips with the coalition army. You can't beat them if you can't find them. Sue's artillery opens up on the coalition artillery. Driving it back. Throwing it into confusion. Russian artillery opens up on the over-eager racing cavalry. Some horses were harmed in the filming of this battle. And the battles are resolved in the early evening. And the surprise French drive on the coalition left fails. The French drive on the Pratsen is driven back with heavy losses. Here is last turn. The French would need to destroy six coalition blocks this turn. That's not going to happen. The coalition army is still very much intact. The French have suffered heavy losses with no gain. Napoleon's Austrian gamble did not pay off. Good game.